A few new auto layout updates were released in Config 2024, so let's have a look at them together. As usual, you've got a link in the description to sign up or upgrade yourself to the professional plan. Let's jump in. In the file, I have this card and you'll notice in the layers panel that it's kind of broken up. So I do have a frame at the top where I have the image and then I have a frame at the bottom and then everything's just kind of dumped in into here. So nothing's in an auto layout, nothing's even grouped together. This is something that sometimes when I design, I do like to just throw things on there. But now I would like to maybe create this into a component or just make it a bit more neat. So if I select this bottom card, the white one, and then I add an auto layout, what's gonna happen is it's gonna try and put everything in an auto layout and just break it completely. I'm gonna command Z. So as we know, auto layout sets a rule for all of the children inside of it. And as we look at this card, we can see there isn't one rule. There are many rules, right? The icon and the text are one rule. Then all of these create like rows together. That's a different rule. And these are one rule and maybe these two together. So now there's a new feature called suggest auto layout. So if I select this bottom frame, I right click and I go into more layout options and suggest auto layout. And then look at that. Of course, it's also beautifully done because Figma is incredible. And you can see that it's already highlighting for me. I had a little pop-up saying seven new auto layouts were added and it's highlighting for me what it actually did. And it's just what we mentioned before, right? It made the prices into one auto layout, then it grouped them with the title, then it made rows out of the different elements that are on offer. And then it added one big auto layout to everything. And I can see on the layers panel as well that there are little blue dots next to the auto layout that it's added to signify that those are new ones that it kind of created for me. Now, this is also really great to highlight little inconsistencies because as I said, I just dropped all these elements in there. And once it created this auto layout for me, I can see that actually this is way off, right? 16 on the left, 14 on the right. That's just not right, okay? So I can now go in and tweak it, but it's done the first job for me. One thing to note that they did mention during config that this works really well on smaller frames. So if you try and do this for a whole page, it might struggle. So it's good to still kind of go inside out with this and not just try and apply this to your whole frame and, and maybe drill down a little bit. So for example, I did do this just on the white one and then I might go into the whole card and do this again it's most likely only gonna just add an auto layout because it doesn't need a deeper level but worth a try and see maybe it's finding something that does need an extra auto layout inside of it so that's the first update now Figma can suggest them for us the second one has to do with absolute position I've got this plus button and I want to put it you know on the bottom right corner of this card so when I move it in we know what happens is that it kind of will dump itself into the auto layout and then I can click on absolute position and then I can move it out using alignment tools or just move it out. What Figma have updated now, and you can even see this when I move in, it says to ignore auto layout, hold control. So as I'm dragging, I just need to hold down control and you see that on my pointer, I now have the absolute position symbol. It's also showing me which auto layout frame is gonna absorb this. So now I'm on the white one, now I'm on the kind of row one. If I were to move to the top, it would be that one. So I kind of know which one it's going to go in. So I'm gonna drop it in here and then align it. And, and it's absolute position, we can see that that's toggled on. So that's just a little tiny update. Now the last update isn't really live yet. And it's kind of like a sneaky, sneaky way of seeing it. But I do wanna show you how auto layout is going to look and function with the new updated UI. So as I said, the new UI isn't live yet, but what is live is slides. And inside of slides, we do have the new UI. So if you go into slides and then toggle the design mode in the bottom toolbar, you will see the new panel. Now I don't know if this is the final look of it. It's still in beta, so I'm sure things will change, but it's a nice kind of, I think it's really nice to start getting used to it. So I have these five circles in here and we can see on the left, we do have a layers panel, so we can see them there as normal. And then on the right hand side, we're seeing this new panel. I'm not gonna go through the whole panel now. I'll do a separate video on that. But for now, let's just focus on auto layout. So in order to add an auto layout with this new UI, we can just use our trusted shift A or the button for auto layout has now moved into the layout section of this design panel. See, if I hover over this button, it says use auto layout. So I'll click on that and now it has a little tick next to it. Now this has now changed to auto layout instead of layout, like it said before. And we can see that it's already a bit different. So the reason for the whole UI change is that Figma said that they wanna make things a bit simpler. So for example, we are used to seeing the width and height way up above in the design panel, but now they kind of said, well, width and height 
is to do with the layout. So why shouldn't it be with the layout, which kind of makes sense. Let's go through the different functions here. If we look at the width and the height, you can see that now it says hug. And if I hover over it, it is changed by the actual size. So we're used to having it like this, right? We have the width as one and then the hug fix and fill as another. So what they've done in the new UI, they've just kind of made a hybrid of the two. Now, as I said, if I hover over it, it does change, but also I can resize this panel. And if I resize it enough, it will just put it in brackets next to it as well. So you can just see it at a glance. If I look at this drop down, I do have quite a lot of things in here. I can change it to a fixed width. So then I just swap between the two and I can add a min and a max width. I'll add a max width just so we can see how it looks. I'll add, let's say a thousand. And then you'll see that when I select it, I don't actually still see what the max width is, but I've got that symbol next to the W. I've got those two lines telling me that there is a max width on here. And then if I go to the drop down, I will see what it is. Yeah, so it's okay. Underneath we have our layouts. They look the same as they looked before really. Nothing's changed there. Then underneath we have the gap or the spacing. So same as before really. We have a drop down where we can change it between the number and automatic. And we can also just type in auto like we used to to move between the stacked and the space between. Then underneath we have our paddings. Now again, nothing's changed here. I can scroll left and right to increase the paddings. I'll just give this a background color so we can see it in action. So I can do that and change them. I can also hold on command and tap in and do everything at once. So nothing's changed. It's the same as how we're used to it. It just looks a bit different. I think in general, a lot of this UI, they've just taken a lot of the icons and made them a bit thinner. You can really see this in the alignment box. So you can see those blue lines are so tiny. And if I double click to make it space between, they are even tinier. They see they're really, really thin blue lines, um, which is nice and aesthetic, I guess. But all of the functions remain the same. You can split up the padding here as well if you want. And then instead of the three dots that we're used to within this design panel, we now have this button that to me, this icon kind of says filters or edit rather than extra, but I guess I'll get used to it. So you can click on here and then it's like extra auto layout settings. Um, so we have the extruded stroke, we have the canvas stacking and we have the alignment. So everything we're used to with auto layout still exists inside of here. There's nothing new, but it just looks a bit different and it takes a minute to get used to it. And that was that super short, not much was announced to do with auto layout in this config, but I still wanted to jump on and do a short little video just to make sure we're all clear on how to use these functions. I hope you enjoyed. Leave a comment below. Let me know what your favorite config updates were. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you at the next one.